Hey guys, this is Coach Ben, and this is the Benchcast with Bench and Benny and Small Arm Leg Strong. Who needs an intro when you got something like that? <laughs> That's all you need. You just need to send it hard there. You just need the announcer voice. All right, so today we are talking beginning bench, starting out on the bench press. We're going to talk about some of our mistakes, some of the mistakes we made, our first meet experience with the bench press, um, what I'll look for in a beginner, all this good stuff. I think it's going to be a real value-packed episode. Remember to share it, give a five-star review. All that helps tremendously. All right, we are on Instagram Live currently, welcoming in all our viewers Please drop a comment if you have any questions. We're going to interact with you on the show. And also, if you follow us on Instagram in the future, at Big Benches, if you just find the show for the first time, make sure that you follow us. And when we go live for a bench cast, that's your opportunity to interact with us now uh, on Instagram. All right. And follow us on Facebook while you're at it. Subscribe on the YouTubes. So, talking beginning bench today, I'm really excited for this episode because we're talking bench. I think last time we were talking deadlifts a little bit, kind of pissed me off. It was a little rough for you there. Yeah, but now we're back to talking bench. All is right. Um, so, I th- guess we're going to start with some of the big mistakes that we see, oftentimes commercial gym setting. Um, we're talking fresh, all right, fresh, new to the bench press. Dude's getting on the bench, not knowing what the hell's going on, how to grip the bar, all this other stuff. So, we're going to go from the ground up today, all right? And even for advanced lifters, this is a really good refresher on how everything's supposed to be executed. I think the thing with advanced lifters sometimes is they, they get caught up in the details too much, and they start going past the most simplest steps, you know, whether it's a setup or or just some basic things, they kind of overlook it. And I'm guilty of this sometimes too, especially in the shirt work. Um, you know, there's things I would I would overlook or let bad habits creep in. And sometimes it's good to just refresh and go from the ground up. You get into a groove, sometimes you need to take a couple steps back to launch yourself forward. Yeah, absolutely. Always good to go back to the roots of the movement and just refresh your memory on them. Uh, make sure everything you're doing is in stepped order and just um, ready to go fluid so walk into a commercial gym what's one of the big things that you'll see off the bat monday bench days see chest that? day yeah, that's chest yeah, day that's interesting if you ever want to see a packed house on the bench at la fitness whatever gym man you go on a monday i guess they call that international chest day for all you bodybuilders out there yep i used to be part of that gang um, International Chest Day, you can't get a free bench. It's unbelievable. I remember walking in not too long ago, exports. I wanted to get some benching on, right? Just doing some off season feet up bullshit. And uh, man, I remember having to wait. It was over 30 minutes for a bench. It was unbelievable. It gets rough, you know? You also see people bouncing the bench off their chest. That's huge, too. Yeah, bouncing yep. the bar. So, some of the things I'll see, uh, the touch and go like that. Uh, that's a huge mistake that I'll see, and they don't know it's a mistake, but if you were to go on to compete, we all know automatic red lights. You have to have a pause, but a lot of people don't know to train like that, and even when they do, right, even when they do do a meet, which blows my mind that you know what the standards are, you still see people training this way, just completely bouncing the bar. Yes, I think it's totally ego. I don't know what else it could be. It's totally ego. You have an understanding of the lift. You could just add 30 pounds, just touch and go, you know. Yeah. And, you know, the interesting thing, I, I tell, people, uh, tell people all the time this, is the more you pause, the more it becomes easier to pause, you actually don't get more out of touch and go. Once you become accustomed to pausing, you get that value of uh, being able to control your alignment, being able to control your touch point, putting yourself in a better position, you're actually better off for it. I don't think I can touch and go more than I can pause at this point. We just came back from Monster Bench. I had a five-pound PR on a touch and go, then a pause. Yeah, isn't that wild? That's crazy. That's because now you're used to that pause. The thing with touch and go, guys, it's not just the ego, but 
your chances of hitting that bar path perfect, right, and have a good bottom alignment is next to none, all right? Your star's got to align. It's, it's very difficult to have any control whatsoever when that shit's bouncing random spots off your chest and you're trying to push that bar back. Uh, we all know, if you follow us on YouTube, the, the tactical prowess that goes into um, a well-executed bench press, that bar path has to be just about spot on when you're touch and go benching not only is it grading poor movement pattern you aren't hitting good bottom positions good touch points but uh you aren't getting the training effect at the chest and that's really the hugest thing especially if you're a competition lifter you are not getting that training effect at the toughest part in the range of motion all right you can't catch a rebound on the bench in the squat they don't make you pause they don't tell you up in the squat nope you get that nice rubber band effect at the bottom yeah, squat, go ahead. You can touch and go, quote unquote, right? You hit your depth, you get up. You can catch that rebound effect. But the bench is interesting because you can't do that. You have to wait for that pause command. So if you do not train for that, you are not going to be well off, my friend. Uh, you are going to have a very, very hard time. I would even train, if you're, if you're really new to benching, I would slow everything down. Um, almost tempo style, bring it down three seconds, pause for three seconds, and then fire up. Uh, I would never go slow on the way up at a beginner. I'd like to reinforce um, driving into that bar. I think that's a big thing we see with beginners. They're just very slow sometimes. They don't know how to move their body. Yeah, that too. Um, I coach uh, some younger lifters at the gym, and they just they don't explode into the bar because you're teaching them all this stuff. You're telling them to bring it down controlled, but they just don't explode into it. And you always want to reinforce, especially when an athlete exploding into that bar. Uh, but touch and go, such a huge thing that we see all the time uh, in the gym and commercial gyms. Mistake number one. All right, the other mistake I see often is a very uh, what I would call a chest heavy bench press. Where talking about the elbow flare. Elbow flaring out, um, the bar is touching really high on your chest, almost towards your neck, towards your clavicles. Do you ever bench that way? I've, I've never benched that way, but just I'm, I used to be a big elbow flare, just the touch point mm -hmm. was always real low. Yeah, I find people that bench with a really high touch point, uh, elbows way out, we're talking almost 90 degrees away from your body. Those are the people, too, that have a really difficult time adjusting to a powerlifting style bench press. That's why I always say, you know, bodybuilders have a rough go in that transition, you know, because you're taught, hey, let's isolate the chest. Yeah. Let's do everything we can to feel our chest. When in powerlifting, uh, it's more or less loading your lats. Uh, you actually don't want to feel your chest. And oftentimes, uh, I rarely get even a chest pump unless I'm doing dumbbells or something. Unless I'm doing a lot of pause work. Yeah, you yep. have, unless you get pause work. You ever get a chest pump? Uh, honestly, the only time I ever got a chest pump from doing bouncing style bench press, we talk about eight, ten second pauses, something ridiculous. It's a lot of yeah, volume, just, right? Yeah. yeah, usually if you're doing a power lift and bench press, the goal is different. You're just trying to maximize leverages to lift the most weight. You're not focusing on a particular muscle group in general. Uh, I love when lifters come up to me. And they say, hey, I got a huge lap pump from that session. That's pretty awesome. I've gotten more lap pumps since I started benching with you than I've had chest pumps. That's right. Yep. It's all about the back and the back on the bench. Um, huge player, but that's a huge mistake. Uh, if you want to you talk kind of a little bit about good bottom position, if you're someone that does this, all right, and, and you're catching yourself right now, and you're like, oh, shit, Coach Ben calling me out on my elbow flare, my high touch point bullshit, right? What you can do here, all right, um, in the bottom position, all right, take your, take your elbows, glue them to your sides, and just come out 45 degrees, all right? So you don't want to be out 90. You're not going to be tucked into your side, but come out comfortable 45 degrees, all right? That's a good start point for where you want your elbows, and then align your wrists over your elbows, all right? So the elbows away from the body, 45 degrees, and then the wrists over the elbows. That's where you want to grab the bar. And wherever that is on your chest, that's where you want to touch. Simple as that. And then I would start training in that position, all right? So if you're listening, like I said again, shit, Coach Ben called me on my bullshit, and you're realizing you're doing this, 
that's where to start, my friends. And then if you're one of those guys who avoids benching just because it's bothering your shoulders, it could be because you're grinding it out all the way up here, even Absolute, through that shoulder. Very good point. Very good point. Um, especially older lifters, too. Been through it a lot. The more you do this with heavier weight for an extended period of time, the more that's going to beat you to shit. So I've had a lot of people come to me with shoulder issues, all this, and um, we've been able to correct it almost 100% of the time just by changing the way they bench. It's huge. Setting up shoulders underneath you, proper bottom position we just talked about. Uh, just doing that simply will take away most shoulder issues because, like you said, you're out there grinding through your shoulders to finish the lift. Um, really destructive for that joint. So that's also a common myth that bench pressing bad for your shoulders. We've covered that in videos in the past. Uh, it's not. Poor benching is bad for your shoulders, but if you do it the correct way, you're tight, you're using leg drive, you're, you're loading into your lats, you're in a good bottom position. Nothing to worry about whatsoever. All right, You should always be rather healthy benching. As long as you take care of your body, keep up with what you're doing, putting yourself in good positions. All right. We got any comments coming in right now? No, not just yet. We All right, uh, guys, on the Instagram, drop your questions below. We're talking beginning bench. You can share your story about how uh, you started on the bench, good or bad. You know, we enjoy funny stories. We're going to share ours as well. Uh, unfortunately, Elvis had a, a poor first meet experience <laughs> on the bench. I know we pretty much covered that every bench cast. Poor guy can't let it <laughs> can't, can't get away from it. <laughs> he can't get away from the past. We keep rehashing it. He has nightmares about it, but we'll keep bringing it up. Every time I close my eyes, I see see three red lights. <laughs> but uh, my first meet ended up really poor on the bench. First, first attempt, missed all the commands, no pause. I had actually started training with the pause, but I think I started way too late on that regard. Started about a month out with a pause. Next attempt. Uh, what was your thought process there? You were going to get stronger, touch and go, and then just. I, I just didn't know. I was unaware. It was did like, you drop once you started to pause? Obviously, I, you probably had to drop weight a little I bit. I had to drop weight. I had to drop my expectations. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I hit my opener in training. It's just combined with poor nutrition of the meat, just yeah. disaster. Awful. Yeah. Yep. And we did a bench cast on that, like what to expect out of meat. Yep. Food's a huge thing, making sure you have that available hydration. Learn from our mistakes so you don't have to see those three red lights. Yeah, and I'll refer you back to that Benchcast episode. I think it was a fantastic episode if you're looking to start your first meet. A lot of people think they're not ready. Well, we cover in that Benchcast that you are ready. All right? You just don't know it yet. And we, we cover everything you need to know for going into your first meet and feeling confident doing so. So I think that's usually what's, <clears throat> uh, excuse me, I ate a hand before the show. <laughs> Ate a hammy, and I got some fries here, too. They're damn good. Got them over at the deli across the street. But anyway, I think that's what really holds people back is they got to uh, drop weight. Yep. And that's it's a hard pill to swallow. Anytime you got to take a step back. It's a really hard pill to swallow. But understanding like where you could potentially end up after uh, is a good thing. Same person at quarter squats. There's, there's squats, you know what I mean? Um, you got to trust yourself to get down there because you're not training to the standard. So you're just going to have a bad meat performance. Man, I just got to go off topic because I am still mad about this. Went to a little commercial gym. Saw a guy quarter squatting a, to a box. He, oh had a, he had a bench set up so he knew where to go, and he's still quarter squatting with 185. I'm still mad. <laughs> <laughs> where else is yeah. he going to go? Uh, you usually oh. see a lot of that stuff in your uh, commercial gyms there. He had the box. I don't even know what to say about that. <laughs> He had a box. He wasn't touching it. He was not touching the box. Nowhere I close. Know. I don't know. We need special help with those. <laughs> I don't even know where to begin. Oh. But this is a lot of misinformation. Yep. Um, so, yeah, having to take a step back, I think that's a real big, uh, big issue for most people. Um, leg drive. People don't even know where to begin with leg drive. Uh, all, all the time, the commercial gyms, people flat back on the bench, feet wherever they land. They're flying. Feet are flying. Yeah, feet are everywhere. Yeah, you think you in a karate class, all the feet flying everywhere. Once you get into trouble on the bench, you see them just flailing. Yep. So no leg drive whatsoever. Oh, this is a good one from Bench Buddy. I was very self-conscious the first time benching. Thought I was going to be judged by my strength or lack thereof. 
Yeah, well, that's that's true too. A lot of people, especially starting out in a new environment, um, you don't know what to expect. But we we're talking to Kendall the other week. That was a great episode too. Definitely recommend you check that out because she was a softball player, you know, just at college now, and she came into uh, powerlifting gym to start doing uh, secretary duties. I guess yep. you'd call it, you know, managing. Uh, paperwork and doing all that email stuff. The behind the scenes that uh, makes it all run smooth. Yeah. I can only imagine like what she was was thinking of when she first came into the gym. You know what I mean? Starting to train with the crew. Yep. Um, and just being in that environment. <laughs> I remember her coming in the first day. I was trying to make her feel more comfortable. I was trying to uh, you know, make some jokes and stuff, but I don't think she was happy. <laughs> she was pretty stone cold faced. Um, but yeah, that the nervousness that comes along with being in a new environment. Uh, but like she said, being in a powerlifting gym is actually uh, probably nothing like you'd expect. It's very friendly. Uh, everyone wants to help you out of meat. Um, and, you know, at the end of the day, aren't we all judging each other? <laughs> I'm judging you right now, Elvis. <laughs> so nothing you can do. I, I think even to add that, nobody has a better success story benching than you. Because what did you start off benching? Uh, well... Technically, I guess you'd say I started off benching an empty bar. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I had a hard, I had a hard go with that too, believe it or not. Back um, in uh, long ago, because uh, I started pretty young. Granted, a lot of people don't start young like that. This must have been middle school, training in the basement with my dad. Um, yeah, I'm. Don't kid you. I uh, could not press the empty bar. He actually had to take me off the bench. He was like, "All right, we're gonna practice with some dumbbells." Uh, until he could develop some more control to handle this bar. And uh, so I took a step back. I had like maybe 10s. Uh, I kid you not, I was benching 10-pound dumbbells uh, until I figured this shit out. And then I started working with the bar, added from there. And here we are, 705 right now, uh, making my run through the 700s. So, you know, I started pretty early compared to some others. But, yeah, it's, it's a long journey. Uh, I don't even know how long ago that is. I think... Everyone's very nervous about where they start off, but most of us start off pretty weak. Absolutely, there, yeah, that's, well, that's true. There's always a freak that comes in, you know, benching 225 their first go around, but that's, that's rare, you know. There's always someone stronger yeah. than you. Of course, yeah. <laughs> always someone stronger always. than you. There's uh, plenty of people that kick my ass. I mean, unless you have the world record, I guess you... Uh, but you're not going to hit that your first time in. You know, yeah. Yeah, absolutely not. So there's always someone stronger than you, so no, no need to really be... To be nervous, but you know it's easier said than done. I remember being nervous as shit, benching around a lot of freaks, but um, it's more or less jumping out of your comfort zone. And we could do a whole podcast just <laughs> on getting out of your comfort oh, zone yeah. in different scenarios. But um, even to get to the point where I, uh, point where I am now coaching, uh, you wouldn't believe it, but I was the shyest person in the world. I must have worked at a place for two years, not said a word to anyone. <laughs> I did my thing and I left pretty much. Um, Nobody I noticed you were gone. I did, yeah, I did not <laughs> want to start a conversation whatsoever. And then just through events, I remember having phone interviews. God, I hated phone interviews. <laughs> hate those things. I'd much rather just be there in person. But um, I'd be nervous as shit. Uh, I'd have to do something while I'm at the phone interview. I couldn't just be sitting there. I had to be driving or something. I was nervous as shit. Um, but just doing those, and, and I remember presenting presenting was a big thing for me now i could care less you know it's just having to get out of your comfort zone and just do it but like i said that could be a whole other podcast so we're gonna try to stick to the topic here of uh beginning bench before we start to easily roll into deadlifts here because <laughs> i feel something about deadlifts coming up so we're gonna avoid that we're gonna keep it on bench for today <laughs> uh, so a couple other things i wanted to touch on that Big mistakes, grip to the bar, um, especially close grip. I don't know why everyone thinks close grip benching has to be so damn handcuffed. I don't know why people Hands think are inside your shoulders. You want to do it like on the smooth part of the knurling. Yeah, yeah. That doesn't even feel good. No, not at all. And I can't even like get down. That's all the way gotta hurt. Me. That's really bad for your shoulders. It's bad for your wrists. <laughs> Wrist, shoulder. That's just bad. People don't know, though, we're actually going to do a video soon on proper close grip benching, which we've done in the past, uh, where you still want to keep joint alignment. You never really want to bring your grip within your shoulders. 
But starting out, you have no idea where to place your hands. You see a little ring. You know, I think the traditional thing, how I started out, was that you just put your pinky on the ring, which isn't a bad spot for the general male. Um, usually, that's a good spot. Depending, everyone's a little bit different structurally, but um, not a bad place to start, but there's definitely better places suited for every individual, and it depends on what you're doing. But that's usually my general recommendation, pinky on the ring, but I don't think everyone knows that. Where'd you start? What, what the hell did you do? Empty oh. bar, what the hell did you do? Empty bar, I went thumb from the smooth. Thumb from the, okay. Yeah. So that's usually what I call good female grip. So yep, yep. I think Got that small worked shoulders, out. I think I qualify. <laughs> <laughs> so I think it worked out in the end. But uh, yeah, that's a rather close grip. Yeah. I started off close grip. I never really branched out because I was so afraid of the myth. Benching kills your shoulders. Yeah. Well, yep. there you go right there. It's out there. It's out there. Unfortunately. Um, what did you do for close grip? You ever do close grip work? I mean, where the hell do you go from there? That's well, about it. Well, I never did close grip from there. I just kept on doing that. That was my oh, regular okay. bench. That was it. Yeah. Never did any kind of close grip stuff? No, yeah, because I, I tried. I mean, but you I wouldn't like, have anywhere to go. You'd yeah, then I'm like on guys. the smooth. Yeah, yeah, you'd be one of those guys. One of those jackasses at the gym. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hurting themselves. Oof. I hate seeing that. But uh, anyway, moving on. Breathing, huge thing. Breathing was a, a, a big thing I see in the gym. People messing up, crazy shit, doing. It's just I, oh, there's yeah. no rhyme or reason. Just crazy shit with the with the breathing. So that's something that you want to focus on too when you're starting out. Um, that uh, also people exhaling on the way up. Not necessarily a poor strategy, but. You'll it's, find out one you don't want to do because you want to keep that bracing. It's definitely not what you want to do to maximize the weight you're going to bench. Yes, absolutely. And that's a good way to put it. That's not necessarily wrong, but it's not going to maximize the amount of weight that you're lifting. All right, so. I think another really good point to hit on is to ask for a spot if you need it, especially if you're starting out, because uh, I think everyone has one of those stories. Yes. Yes. Um, asking for a spot. Don't be afraid to do that, especially if you know you're going heavy. I mean, I remember being in Gold's Gym, and I was moving up. I was getting ready for my first meet. All right, I had 275 on the bar, and that was rather heavy for me. And I should have, in hindsight, been smart, and I should have asked someone, hey, can you just watch me here? This is probably the most weight I've ever lifted in my life, and I might fail it. Um, but I did not do that, and I took it out, and I took it down, and it did not come up. <laughs> and then you get a whole scene. Everyone's jumping over shit to try to rescue you, um, and it's, you just don't want that. So just get a spot, and we talk about the benefits of a handoff. If you have to train alone, uh, anytime someone's around you, just get them to help you out. Simple as that. So we're going to send my story back to way throwback. I remember this like it was yesterday because I had just finished watching a Jay Cutler motivational video. And one of the quotes he said, you got to lift it in your mind. If you're going to ask for a spot, it means you had lack of confidence in yourself. You might as well go home because you're not going to lift it. <laughs> <laughs> well, granted, what's he? Bodybuilder. And yeah. I remember he actually came to that Gold's Gym because we had a lot of bodybuilders come by there and train. And Jay Cutler was in there one day with his tour bus, everything, the whole shebang. And guess how much that guy was lifting? Most he put on the bar that day. 315. 135. <laughs> That's how much he had on the bar. So I don't think he really needs a spot at that point. So carry on. Jay Cutler steered me wrong because on that day, I decided to go for a PR at the time. I was young. I'm not going to say how young because I was a little older for this, but it was 185. It was most I ever lifted. I took it out. First rep was good. Second rep was good. And I was like, oh, I feel good. I'm going to do a five rep max right here. Uh -oh. Third rep was, was done. It was just uh, you know when you have the bar on your chest, you get to complicate all of this, you get to think about all the decisions you made in your life that yeah. led you to the point where you failed 185? Yeah. No one's around the gym, so you do the roll of shame. Oh, boy. Uh, you, you roll don't it tell to me your you waist. Did that. Oh, roll no. it to your waist and do a crunch up. Oh, yeah. man. Did you clip the bar? I clipped the bar. No way. Yep. Oh, yep. my goodness. <laughs> this guy clipped the bar. Jay Cutler did me dirty. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> That's probably the biggest pet peeve. If I see someone clip the bar, I immediately go over there and I will take those clips <laughs> off. That's how like people die. <laughs> no joke. That's how you like die in your garage, clipping the bar. 
Um, cause if you fail a weight, now you can't do the teeter totter, right? You can't get the weights no, up no. that way. You got to do the roll, but if you got enough weight, uh, it's just going to like slowly crush you like an anaconda <laughs> and then pretty soon the lights start going out. You can't breathe anymore. And then you're just a dead guy on a bench. At least you went out doing what you love doing, but that ain't no way to go out. But unfortunately <laughs> there's no one there to add more weight before they call the ambulance. Absolutely. Yep. And that's not a meat. So the lift didn't count anyway. Nope. <laughs> so horrible weight. Don't clip your bar. If you get anything out of this, this bench cat today, <laughs> don't clip the bench bar. I, you should not have such uncontrolled, um, up to the bar that that weight should be sliding anyway and you know, there's no reason that weight should be going anywhere the only time that i would ever clip the bar is like last week when we had this bar loaded up all the, the way to the end yeah we maxed out the capacity of the bar we had to make sure those weights don't fall out fall off while we're benching so we, we got a good question from bench buddy uh speaking of spotting advice on how to navigate a spot with a stranger at the gym especially when most people don't know how to do a proper handoff all right, so my, my thing I'll tell most of my lifters, all right, because I have a lot of lifters as well on our team that train alone most of the time. And a lot of times I do see that they get spots or handoffs, and they are very poor. They get pulled out of position, and I'm like, well, shit, you know, unfortunately that happened. Uh, but I tell them, take the time just to quickly educate them. You know, I could educate someone a spot for me in, in quickly less than a minute, all right, and it comes out pretty good. If they don't have any clue how you want it, then you're just asking for a shit show. All right? But if you even clearly communicate with them, even if they do know what they're doing, just communicate with them because everyone's a little bit different. Like at the Arnold this past year, I had to change handoff people um, just because what they're used to isn't what I'm used to, and it just was not a good mix. You know, it's like Peyton Manning trying to connect with someone other than Marvin Harrison. <laughs> it's just probably not a great mix. So... Um, I had to find, uh, quote unquote, my Marvin Harrison, and we we made it happen. But if you're at a commercial gym, just take the time, take a minute to just educate whoever's handing you off uh, how to do it properly. I mean, there's not too much involved in that. We've done videos on how to educate a handoff before. Yep. Um, Unfortunately, sometimes you're just Austin Collie to Peter Manning. Yeah, yep. unfortunately. Unfortunately. But for the most part, I, I pretty much... Take anyone, and that's something that I take a lot of pride in. Just be able to pick up anyone and make it work because education is always the number one thing. Be like, hey, um, I'm going to do a three, two, one. I want you to give me the bar slowly when I take my breath. You just want to clear just the hook enough. I want to I wanna feel the weight as you come out. And usually just something quick and simple like that is just enough to get it how you need. It's not going to be perfect, and it's not going to be your Marvin Harrison. But you're going to have Austin Collie, and you're still going to get in the end zone at the end of the day. So how about, that's, that's, one, for the, that's one for the gram. That's a clip right there. Save it. Oh. All right. So moving on, um, let's talk about real quick our first meet, benching. You want to start? Yeah, actual benching or failing? <laughs> he's, he's, having, he's having flashbacks. Have flashbacks. He's having flashbacks. He's looking around. He's all nervous right now. He's sweating. <laughs> let's not bring this up, oh. but let's do it anyway. <laughs> well, let's talk about my first meet successfully benching because that also happened. Okay, well, let's first touch on the one I didn't tell you. <laughs> Where do you think you went wrong? I went wrong on skipping out on pauses and trading okay. because I was pausing myself in my mind. I could have easily taken five minutes out. Had someone, hey, can you give me a pause and call me up? So at interesting. The of the you bench. thought you were pausing long, but I you thought were I was, not, and that's common. Hundred percent not. Okay, that's common. Usually, you need someone to hold you true. Yep. The time slows down when you're under the bar. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. I also did not practice with a handoff person. That was also big. Okay, what threw you off there? So you um, were used to taking out your own bar. I was used to taking out my own bar in the way that you usually see people do it. You know, make it a decline press first. Okay. Instead, so I had to get my shoulders out of position to get the bar out of the rack. Sure. And I never got reset back by the time it was time to press. Okay. So that was rough. And then just skipping out on some more accessory work. Could have used a, little, a lot more tricep strength, you know, just to kind of... All right. So at least you know you learned a lot from that. Huge. I say it's never a waste as long as you learn. I remember bombing out on the bench. Uh, that was actually my first multiply meet. Believe it or not, and I, I bombed on the bench, um, 
but more or less what I learned there, some things I had to get better at, take out, locking the bar out strong, but um, I did cut 27 pounds, <laughs> and the shirt doesn't quite fit the same, 27 pounds lighter. Uh, even when you do bulk back up, I didn't quite fill out the upper body. Squats went great, three for three, just could not get a bench in, so I learned from that as well. Um, what happened to your next meet? You learned from your mistakes, came back, nailed learned it. Learned from mistakes, nailed it. Nailed it. Crushed it. Talking three for three? Talking about two for three. Two for three. Two okay. for three. I have uh, <laughs> some issues with the judging, but you know, whatever. All right. <laughs> That's still better than zero for three. It's still better than zero for That's three. It's two better than zero for three. I, I just had it in my head. Uh, don't suck. All right. That's okay. a great phrase. <laughs> I've seen that in the back of shirts many of the time. Um, so to tell you my first meet experience... Uh, actually went very, very well. Very, very well. Just to meet you were just, you know, doing a couple push-ups to warm up? Yes. <laughs> yeah, so granted there were some things I learned along the way. But um, I don't think I've had over 275 in my hands that whole meat prep. I was running Shaco. If anyone knows the Shaco program, um, yeah, I mean, you're rarely going over 85% at any occasion. Uh, you never really have a heavy weight in your hand. It's all... Lots of volume, lower percentages, higher frequency. You're doing a lot of it. So that's what I did my first meet. I uh, wanted something to follow. And like I said, I don't think I handled over 275, but I came in there that day, and I ended up hitting 300 pounds. So that went really well. And that, that was always my number to get to. Uh, I was always shooting for that because my dad, I would always ask him, like what he bench back in the day because I wanted to kick his ass. I'm always trying to kick someone's ass. So I asked him, and, and granted, uh, he said 295 um, because they never really maxed out, as he would say. He did a lot of reps, but as far as he could remember, it was 295 for one. So I was like, I'm going for 300 and we can kick his ass. So that's what I did, and that was really important to me because it was like, hey, I beat you. You know, I can't beat him in chess yet, but I can beat him on the bench. So I've just been... Finding names, kicking ass on the bench ever since. But uh, that was a really good meet. And, yes, I did warm up in the back room with push-ups only. Don't recommend that. <laughs> that was dumb. But it's what you get for your first meet. I think a real good takeaway from that one is to uh, practice the movement more. Yeah, absolutely. That's a good one. That's a good one. Anytime you get your hands on the bar is practice. All right, You got to think of it as a very specific um, movement that you have to perfect. You know, you ever see, like, an uh, Olympic gymnast or whatever, they're practicing the routine on the daily. All the time. You know, I'm not going to tell you you have to bench every day, but if you want to. Every day is bench <laughs> that's, that's right. <laughs> so you know, there's ways to spin it that you can manage, like, your know, fatigue levels and whatnot. Like I said, I was never going real heavy, so I was staying healthy. Uh, I was never really burning myself out, and I got to practice the movement a lot. Uh, even with that lighter weights, and it just became a lot more proficient um, but yeah, you're spot on with that one. It's a good observation. So that's, that's our first meet experience. If you want to share yours, go ahead on the gram. Let us know, uh, what the hell happened at your first meet. Did it go well? Did it go poor? Did it go at all? Yeah. Did you do a meet yet? Are you looking to do a meet? Are you nervous about the bench? Do you know the commands? Anything you guys want to throw up on the gram? We are here on the BenchCast live, and we are taking those questions, and we can help you out today. So, let's talk about, let's spit it back now. Guy walks into the gym, right? Guy drops a mug at the gym. That was him. He dropped his, uh, what the hell he got in there? Got some tea. He's some so weird, nervous, weird he just drops his stuff. tea everywhere. He's having flashbacks. <laughs> We're talking bench. He's out of his element. So, um, guy walks into the gym, all right? He's never touched a bar. Uh, what, what's my process, really, and what I look for with someone coming to the gym? I don't know what they've done. First thing I usually ask them is, have you benched before? You know, what have you handled in the gym? It's, so two things. I can understand if he knows what the hell is going on at all Yep. in terms of setting up, gripping the bar. If he's never benched before, it's going to be unique to someone that has done something, probably has some poor movement patterns, but we'll see. And then um, the other thing is uh, just to find out, um, you know, where they're at on the bench um, and just kind of get a general consensus of what's going on. So that's what I'll ask them 
have you benched before and what have you handled? So where they're at, so we can know what to work up to. Um, that's what. That's my first question. I'll have them demo it to me. All right. So I'll tell them, you know, get on the bench. Let's see what you got. This is now my opportunity to see what we're working with. What's good. What's not so great. Usually the setup process, more or less, lay back on the bench. Yep, what flat. I call the Brett Favre gunslinger approach. <laughs> Just lay down and let it rip. All right, I get to see grip to the bar. I get to see a lot of the stuff that they're already doing. A lot of the poor things they're doing. You're saying elbow flare. All right, I know what we have to uh, work on that session. Usually, if they're real beginners, they have no idea where to grab the bar. That's where we start, all right, where to grip the bar. We were talking about good bottom position earlier, right? Elbows 45 from the body, wrist over elbow. Grab the bar in that location. You want to take care of that, Elvis? We have a spider <laughs> on the bench cast. That is a problem. Looks like a little bit that of That is the problem. All right, so... Back to it. All right. So where are we going to start with this newbie guy? All right. We take care of grip. We take care of some basic stuff. Um, I've seen people bench with their feet God knows where. All right. Just wherever just, they land, really. Wherever they end up landing at the time. Um, so we get their feet at least set to the floor. All right. We get the hands in a specific spot. Uh, we talk about breathing a little bit. Uh, where to touch on the chest. All that basic stuff. We ought to make sure the shoulders are in a, a good position to start. That's first and foremost. You never want someone to get hurt on the bench. So making sure our shoulders are in a good position. Really important off the bat when you're first learning. Okay. Uh, and then where do we go from there? Obviously, we got the whole setup shindig. Yeah, setup's most important. Setup is, is the most important by far. You have to uh, put yourself in a good position to bench, utilize those muscles correctly. When I get a lifter into our team, that's the first place I'll start, right? We have to talk about setup for a certain amount of time till that's ingrained. Um, you know, that's the, that's the framework. It's you foundation. Can't, you can't build a house without a solid foundation, right? Um, that's what the setup is on the bench. So we have to first talk about that phase. Um, where do we start with that? Three-step process that you might have seen in our videos before. Pinch and tuck the shoulders, right? It's about three-fourths the way down the bench, or one-fourth down the way from the top. All right, you're not quite in position yet, but what you're doing is pinch and tucking your shoulders. Or you want to kind of discuss the process you go through. Do you leverage off the post or yep. anything? Leverage off the post. You want to drive back, get, move the position from your back to your upper back. Yep, so that, that would be step two. So first it's just pinch and tuck, get your shoulders in good position, chest is up, right? Grab night, like Elvis said, he likes to grab the post and kind of shoves the shoulders underneath him yep. with the help from that post. And then from there, step two is that slide back process. And that's using your feet to help set your shoulders, not the other way around. Uh, I really don't like seeing people set their shoulders first and then their, or set their feet first and then plop their shoulders down because... Now they're not taking advantage of using their feet as a tool to help set that shoulder position. All right. So what I'll have them do, pinch and tuck first, right? Then I'll teach them how to use their feet to push back on the bench. While doing so, shoulders are folding underneath them, right? Their neck's stretching out. They're trying to drive their belly to the bar. Like you said, right? They're yep. trying to fold themselves uh, up onto their upper traps, the, the base of their neck. All right. How did that process feel for you the first time? It's it, weird, right? It's definitely a weird change. A good bench setup should not be comfortable. Yes. If you could stay there all day, you're probably not tight enough. And that's where majority of people go wrong is they don't realize that it's supposed to feel absolutely horrible. <laughs> it should not feel good at all. Um, a good, solid bench setup uh, is not a fun thing. And... That's good, <laughs> all right. That's that's something that's hard for people to kind of grasp around, um, but it should not feel good. Like Elvis said, uh, it should be very uncomfortable. Um, what I like to tell people is, it should feel like you can't take that bar out without help. Yep. All right. You can second that. Right. A hundred percent. If you're in a good tuck position, it should feel like you cannot take that bar out with someone giving it to you. You know, it's a strive to achieve that. 
Uh, and then the third step would be placing your feet. We talked about you want to have your feet flat to the floor. Um, in some cases, you like to do the toes back. I like doing toes back because I feel like I get a little more height on the arc. Okay, so that's common too. Uh, he likes to go to toes back, but you can do one or the other, not an in-between. All right, you didn't have your feet flat on the floor. I like to see the toes 45 out, so you increase that uh, surface area. I like a nice wide base, so getting your feet out wide. All right. Um, that creates a nice stable platform, you know, like a yep. tripod you use to like film. Like a tripod. Right? You go a little wider with the legs, very unlikely to fall over, right? Nice stable base. Um, and then that's it, three-step process. You're going to do the feet out flat like that. You're going to drive the toes underneath you and drive the heels down um, so your heels will be up. You, the act of driving them down keeps you tight. So that's pretty much set up on the bench from how I teach it. And, and once you get that down... Right, and then you cover the takeout phase, which no one ever does. How to get a good hand up, how to bring that bar out, how to engage your lats from the start. The pressing is so easy. If you just took everything we just talked about now and put it all together, you're done. Yeah, where to touch the bottom position. I mean, you're pretty much done. Just some finer details, setups, everything. Setup's huge. Setup, takeout. I at the bench clinics, I don't even really have people demo their bench press anymore. <laughs> we don't throw weight on it anymore. We just do the setup. And that's plenty to see. Everyone's like, wow, I've never felt this. It's, it's a huge change. It, it's an unbelievable change. It's just in the setup. We, we, I literally, I just show setup. I just show takeout. I did not load up any of the bars, right? No one demoed any of that. Um, we just touched on those basics, but that makes all the difference. I don't need to see the rest because I know what it'll look like once the rest is taken care of, all the early stuff. All right, I don't need to see the end result. Everyone wants to see the end result and pick that apart. I want to see what you're doing from the very start and work from the ground up because that's the only way you're going to make changes to your bench. If you start in a bad position, there's no way you're going to end in a good position. Yes, that's a good way to, to uh, bring it up there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, if, you, if, you bench, if your bench is a mess... During the pressing phase, it's not the pressing phase. It's everything that's happening beforehand. You're yep. out of position. Once you get out of position, you're never going to regain it. All right? That's, that's what I tell everyone with the setup. It's about getting to you know, your 100% best setup, and it's never going to get better. It's, you're just fighting it from going downhill from there. Got to be in the zone, Chief. That's all it is. Um, so to start rounding this up, I think we touched on a lot of good stuff. Uh, I do want to touch on some of the cues that were really big for us. You know, starting out learning how to how to bench. Uh, what were some of the cues that were really like, wow, this really just made a huge difference for me. The biggest difference is something that I learned recently, and like a couple months back, it's the way to bend the bar. Because everyone tells you bend the bar, bend the bar. That's cool. So you end up bending the bar around your chest. When you really should be bending towards yes. your legs. Yep. And, Huge. Uh, our new product, the Torque Bar, that is out now. Um, the Bench Buddy Torque Bar. That uh, thing will teach you how to bend the bar correctly. Because now you can physically see the bend. Whereas before, on a regular bar, I could tell someone bend this bar. But you don't know if they're doing it right or wrong. Because you can't physically see it really. Um, now with the torque bar, you can physically see it, and you're correct. When I tell them bend the bar with that bar there, they majority of the time will bend it around themselves, like yep. you just described. As opposed to say there was a pole extending from the center of your chest, you want to bend it around, around the pole, pole if that makes sense. All right, so big big difference there. That's the correct way to bend the bar and create that lat tightness. Um, which a lot of people don't understand, don't take advantage of. So that's a great one right there. Um, I guess for me, too, I'd have to throw it back to an old uh, Elite FTS video now. Uh, they actually had Casey Williams in there. They were going over uh, Dave Tate, Casey Williams, someone else. They were going over his bench press, how he could get better at it. Um, and there was just a lot of good tips and tricks thrown around. And at the time, I was unsure to benching. Going through it, uh, I just did my first meet with that. I would do the toes back style like yourself, but with that type of weight, I was finding I was having the damnest time controlling that weight, as in it would want to sway more often. Uh, granted, my technique was not as, as driven home as it is now in terms of creating lat tightness and all, 
but a large majority of it had to do because once I switched to the feet out flat and learned how to create leg drive that way, pushing back on the bench, having that wide base of support, uh, it was night and day with control of the weight. And maybe that's majority a shirted type of deal because you're handling just so much weight, it's an incredible overload that things can start swinging on you uh, versus raw where you can still control it yourself uh, but that that really clicked for me. And then also um, a seminar once with Donnie Thompson about how he, he was really just trying to manipulate his body to cut range of motion as much as possible. And then that just kind of, just him showing that when I was younger, it just it clicked everything. It was like, wow, I cut so much off my range of motion. I don't have to press the bar as far. So I did a lot of that stuff, um, and that really made a huge difference. Another good one is, uh, <clears throat> I think, Blaine Sumner, if you chop off half the bench. Yeah, that was an yep. excellent one. Uh, that one's helping a lot of people with the, with the leg drive. And you have to keep them tightness. Yeah, it's huge. Absolutely. So that one, um, you got three points of contact, really, and your hips are not included. A lot of people think your hips need to be a point of contact. I would argue you don't really want that. Uh, your traps and your two feet. And that's it. You take half that bench away, nothing changes. You know, just think about that for a sec. Nothing's going to change because your hips are active to the pad. They're not lying there. A lot of nope. people just kind of plop their hips there. Just want the material of the pants to just graze the pad. You, just, you need to have contact, but it has to be active hips. You got to yep. be really active in the hips. Um, when I'm teaching that legs out style, driving the knees out, I tell them I almost want to see your hips shaking by how hard you're activating your glutes right now. You should be able to just get in that position and push and feel really, really active in the hips and control where they are by where you push. You know, if you're pushing through the ground into the ground, your hips are going to want to pop up as vertical forces versus pushing away from the floor, almost like an extension away from the floor. It's almost like, you know, benching on ice. You know, if you were to stomp your foot into the ice, you're not going to slip vertical force into the ice. Whether it's you're pushing across the ice, your foot's going to go slipping. A good visual cue for me was... If you imagine a leg extension, one of the, you know, the yeah. quad extensions, yeah. think of that as opposed to a leg press off the ground. Yeah, that's a good way to think about it as well. That would really hit home. Um, that's how you want to create that leg drive. Exactly. Then we're going to drop a couple videos in the show notes about how to bench, talking about everything we did, and, you know, in-depth, full explanations. I think that helped a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah, so... I hope we uh, we touched on a good amount for you today. We have any questions coming in? Nope. Nothing right now? Just wrapped up. All right, so we're going to wrap this baby up. So if you're a beginner bencher, now you should have a little bit better understanding at least where to begin from here. You know, you heard some of our mistakes. Um, and, you know, from here, just continue to educate yourself. That's the biggest thing. It's just continuing to educate yourself. Yep. We have something we've been working on for a while now. The three-week bench school, I'm really amped up about that just because it's first, it's free, all right? It's a, a free program. We're not charging for it at all. Uh, you just sign up, just need your email, and you're in, all right? In the next three weeks, you're going to learn the setup process week one, the takeout process week two, and then pressing the bar week three. We delve in deep to... Uh, the details of the bench, multiple videos included on each training session, and it's broken down into a sequential order, which is the most important thing, is you're not overwhelming yourself all at once. You know, there's a step-by-step -step to it all. You're piecing it together over time, just like a regular uh, curriculum in school. Yep, yep, it's good, because right? you're not building the whole house at once, you're building a wall uh, at a time. Yeah, brick by brick, uh, not going to confuse you, so if you're a beginner, I recommend checking out the three-week bench school. Um, you could get there by uh, dropping your email, and uh, we on Instagram. Follow us on Instagram. Uh, we just need your email. The links in the bio. Um, pretty much just whenever you sign up for that, you're in. All right, we'll, we'll get you enrolled. You'll start your three-week process every Sunday. Is a new enrollment. All right, and I highly recommend that program. That is set up for the beginning lifter. If you have nowhere. You know, have no idea where to begin, even for an advanced lifter. Uh, if you want to refine those little details, I promise you're going to either one, you beginner or advanced, you're going to learn a ton. 
um, sign up for that three week bench school. And it's huge, huge if you want to transition, maybe you're a bodybuilder, want to get into powerlifting, just seen powerlifting, want to get into it. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, if you're already familiar with the bench press, but not how it's performed powerlifting, uh, that is also a great opportunity to learn that stuff. And like I said, completely free. My goal is to get as many people through that program as possible. It's always been to reach as many lifters as possible and just keep spreading good knowledge on the bench. Uh, this is just another outlet to do so. So uh, definitely check that out. All right, we, we spent the past few weeks now filming all these videos for you, making sure got that bench education down. So very excited to have launched that. All right, so that's about it. You know where to find Elvis if you ever decide to post. <laughs> small arm leg strong on Instagram. At small arm leg strong. And then you know me at Bench and Benny. Well, I guess our uh, <laughs> fan just popped on, so it's about time to wrap this baby up. You can follow us on Instagram at Big Benches. My personal's at Bench and Benny. Give us a subscribe on the YouTube and make sure five star review on iTunes. We would much, much appreciate that. Helps out the podcast a ton. Uh, I would be truly grateful if you did that. So uh, thank you again for listening, watching, joining us on Instagram Live. Really appreciate it. And we will see you next week. On the Benchcast. <laughs>